Another cup of Maxwell House coffee, George? Sure. Pour me a cup, Gracie. Maxwell House is always good to the last... Drop. And that drop's good, too. Yes, it's Maxwell House Coffee Time, starring George Burns and Gracie Allen. With yours truly, Bill Goodwin, that tough man of the screen, Dewey Robinson, and the music of Meredith Wilson and his orchestra. For your Thursday night comedy enjoyment, it's George and Gracie. And for your everyday coffee drinking enjoyment, it's Maxwell House. Always good to the last drop. It's morning in the Burns home. And as George comes down to breakfast, he is greeted by a very excited Gracie. Oh, George, did you hear the news? Hurry and get packed. We're leaving for Paris. What? We're going to the peace conference in Paris. I just heard it on the radio. Gracie, that's... The newscaster said the fate of the world might depend upon the Paris meeting of Burns and Allen. (laughs) I heard the radio in the bedroom. The man didn't say Burns and Allen. He said Burns and Stalin. (laughs) Jimmy Burns and Joseph Stalin. Oh. That's what the man said. You and I aren't going over there and get all these international disputes straightened out? Of course not. Those disputes will be straightened out by diplomats. Oh, the hard way, huh? (laughs) Yes, in the side pocket. Judge, look, would it be all right with you if I went to the Paris Peace Conference to report it for my newspaper column? Gracie, things are confused enough over there. You stay here. All right. But will you suggest some other subject for my column, then? Well, let's see. What interesting news have I heard lately? Oh, uh, the the uh, the Dion's up in Canada had a new baby. Mm, just one? <laughs> just one. Oh, that might make a good column. It would cheer up General Motors and the Ford plant. <laughs> cheer them up? Well, yeah. They think their production is down. <laughs> I'd forget that item. Let's look through the newspaper. Oh, don't bother, dear. I'll just do a simple column explaining atomic energy or something. Atomic energy. How would you explain atomic energy? Well, uh, uh, let's look through the newspaper. Yes, I thought so, yes. Uh, why don't you do a column about the crime wave? The crime wave? Yeah, the, the paper is full of it. Here's a story about a holdup in a used car lot. Oh, Judge, that's not news. That happens every time they sell one. <laughs> anyway, the country is flooded with pickpockets, safe crackers, and second story men. Well, you know, I might do a column on it at that. How to stop crime. Uh, you could stop it, huh? Well, certainly. You see, where the police make their mistake, the minute they catch a man robbing someone, they put him in jail. That's a mistake. Well, of course. That's a bad influence on him. You, you, you meet a very poor class of people in jail, you know. I imagine you do, yes. Mm-hmm. What that man needs is a home, the mm. companionship of good, honest people. I think every American family should adopt a burglar. Gracie. If we did, we'd all have less to worry about. We certainly would. Much less. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm glad you agree. I'll go Gracie, right down I to don't jail. agree. It's a silly idea. But, George, think what this can accomplish. No more robbed homes, no more cracked safes, and I'll be a heroine. Forget it. It'll be me against crime. Gracie Allen versus the crack safe. An even match if I ever heard one. (laughs) I'm going to my office. Now forget this idea, and that's an order. Poor Gracie. Poor helpless little member of the weaker sex. She smack up against that inexorable law that has stood since the beginning of time. Man is the master and woman must obey. And Gracie's man has issued an order. So she can only do what women have done for thousands of years, pay absolutely no attention to him. (laughs) We find her now looking for the jail where she hopes to get a crook to rehabilitate. Uh, Pardon me, officer. What building will I find the crook in, please? Right here in the city hall, (laughs) ma'am. No, uh... (laughs) 
prisoners who are locked up. Well, that's what I mean. The jail's right here in the city hall, and the crooks are in it. Oh. Well, where are the keys? I'd like to let one out, please. The... <laughs> the sergeant has the keys, and he's kind of busy right now. He's in there teaching a class in the traffic cop school. A school for traffic cops? <laughs> that's interesting. I'll go in and find out what they study. All right now, fellas. You're almost got it. Now, let's take it once again. All together now. Pull over, buddy. Where's the fire? <laughs> That's not nasty enough. Try to remember you're talking to a taxpayer. Now, once again now, and put some feeling into it. Pull over, buddy. Where's the fire? <laughs> ah, that's more like it. Now, the driver will probably say, uh, what's the matter, officer? What did I do? Then what do you say? Oh, a white guy. Class dismissed. Now get out and get busy, and the last one to make a pinch is an old maid. Well, that was very interesting, Sergeant. Huh? Oh, excuse me, lady, I didn't see you. Uh, what can I do for you? Well, I'd like to rehabilitate one of your burglars, please. Come again? Well, thanks, I will if this one works out all right. Uh, what did you say you'd do to the burglar? Rehabilitate him, reform him. Take him out of this awful jail and give him a good home. Oh, I see. Uh, you want to post bond for one of these mugs. Do what? Put up the money for his release. Oh. Oh, I, I didn't know they cost money. <laughs> well, if they do, they do. Uh, have you got something in a nice burglar around 498? <laughs> Are you kidding? I'll go to 595 if he's really in good condition. Now, look, lady, you can't spring any of these crooks for less than 100 bucks. Well, that's outrageous. The OPA will hear of this. Lady. I've got a good notion to take my business to some other jail. Lady, the court sets the amount of the bond. Now, these... Hey, wait a minute. There is one you can have for free. Big Louie. Why can I have him for free? We've got nothing on him. Well, I'm not taking him home in that condition. <laughs> <laughs> Lady, we've got no evidence against him. We know he's the biggest crook in seven states, but we picked him up as a vagrant. Oh, well, all right, I'll take him. Okay, but let me warn you, Big Louie is a mighty tough gorilla. He is? Well, maybe I better start with a the man then, huh? Eh, uh, yes. <laughs> hey, Louie, this dame wants to see you. Okay, I'm coming. I'll leave you two alone. This dames are crazy. Uh, you want to see me, lady? Well, yes, I want to get you out of here. You see, I'm interested in crime. Uh, me too. Say, let's work together. Oh, that's the spirit. Cooperation. I say all you need is a chance. That's all. Just one good chance. <laughs> now, uh, my idea is to place you in a nice home. A home where you'll be surrounded by good books, good paintings, and music. Oh, now we're getting somewhere. Inside job, huh? Well, uh, mostly inside, yes. Okay. Now, with valuable books and stuff, we'll need a fence. Oh, I've got a fence. A good one? No, the best there is. Oh, that must be Shady John. No, it's White Picket. <laughs> White Picket? Mm -hmm. Must be a new one. Well, fairly new, yes. Now, here's the address, Louie. Have a shave and get all cleaned up, and I'll expect you around dinner time. Oh, will you be there? Oh, certainly. We're going to work together. Goodbye, Louie. See you for dinner. Oh, uh, okay, babe. Uh, only just one thing. Let's keep this quiet. You see, I'm on the lamp. Well, that's nothing to be ashamed of. We've been on it ever since the ceiling went back on beef. Goodbye, Louie. <laughs> On Harvest Moon. Yes, there's a great song, Meredith, one that's lasted down the years. And mighty timely for tonight, Bill, what with all the good news coming in on this year's harvest, the biggest in history. Oh? Timely, too, is Thomas Hart Benton's great painting of the western wheatlands in our newest Maxwell House coffee ad. Just turn to page 53 in this week's Saturday Evening Post. I already have, Meredith. Threshing wheat, the painting's called. And when you see the golden wheatlands rippling in the breeze, bursting with the bounty of a whole summer's growing, well, it's easy to understand why those fertile, friendly fields are such a vital part of the American scene. As you know in its own way, Maxwell House coffee is a very real part of the American scene, too. 
For just as coffee is this nation's favorite drink, so Maxwell House is America's favorite coffee. Bought and enjoyed by more people than any other brand. Around the country, it's Maxwell House wherever you go. It's flavor, of course, that explains this nationwide preference. The rich, full-bodied Maxwell House flavor that results from the masterful blending of these choice Latin American coffees. Manizales for mellowness. Medellins for richness. Other fine coffees for vigor. And Bucaramangas for full body. The sum of which is great coffee at its flavor peak. So, friends, why not enjoy the best in deep-down coffee-drinking pleasure? You can at only a fraction of a penny more per cup than you'd pay for the cheapest coffee sold. Just say, Maxwell House Coffee. Always good to the last drop. I'm so glad you dropped in. I'm in desperate need of advice. Always glad to be of help, Gracie. What is the nature of your problem? Well, you see, I went down to the city hall this afternoon and picked out a man to come and live here. His name is Big Louie. Gee, Williker, do you think you like him better than Short George? <laughs> oh, Merritt, you don't understand. I'm not going to marry Big Louie. I'm going to reform him. He's a burglar. Oh. I-, I have a brand new theory that will absolutely eliminate crime. Bully for you, Gracie. I'm convinced that if we can eliminate crime, we'll have far fewer criminals. My thought, exactly. But George is too old-fashioned to accept my new theory. The stick in the mud, huh? Oh, yes. He's distrustful of all modern things, even his electric razor. He doesn't think he can shave with it? No, he doesn't think I can peel potatoes with it. <laughs> Every new progressive thing I try to do, he blocks it. Now he's blocking my theory to eliminate crime. How so? Oh, He has a silly prejudice against keeping a burglar in the house. See, no vision. And vision is very important. You're right, Gracie. If it hadn't been for the vision of that great inventor, Fulton, we'd have had no steamboat. For sure. And if it hadn't been for the vision of that great architect, Jackson, we'd have had no stone walls. (laughs) It was my impression Meredith... I, I can't let George know that Big Louie is a burglar. Will you think of some story I can tell him? Well, uh, why not tell him Big Louie's a plumber? Oh, well, he might be here a week. That'd give it away. Yeah, you're right. No plumber ever finished a job in that short a time. Oh, <laughs> oh Meredith, you, you simply got it. Uh-oh, too late. Here comes George up the walk. Who will I tell him Big Louie is? Now, have no fear, Gracie. I'm sure that my nimble brain will rise to the occasion. Hello, sweetheart. Hello, George. Hi, Meredith. Hello, all. Hello, all. Well, uh, I'll just be running, Gracie. It was mighty nice of you to say that my new singer could come and stay at your house for a few days. New singer? With your orchestra, Meredith? Yes, George. Chap named uh, Large Lewis. <laughs> well, goodbye, all. Large Lewis? Gee, Gracie. Why should Meredith hire a new singer when, when I'm on the program? I'm surprised. Well, it caught me flat-footed, too. Do you suppose it's because he... Well, because he doesn't like my voice? Oh, no, George. It couldn't be that. <laughs> but I'm trying to find an explanation for it. Uh, don't rush me. So am I. Okay. Maybe he wants a taller man to help you out with the high notes. How do you like that explanation? It's ridiculous. Oh, you see, that's what happens when I'm in a hurry. Gracie. Oh, wait, here's another one. Maybe he wants him to stay here so he can pick up a few pointers from the greatest vocal talent of all time. You. How does that sound? Pretty good. Mm, I knew I'd get it. (laughs) Meredith realizes how truly great you are. Well, ain't misbehaving all by myself. (laughs) 
But you out smell them all. You don't want to talk to oh, a Sing some more, George. Share the wealth that's stored up inside of you. Oh, great. Oh, yeah. please, George. Open the slot machine of your mouth. <laughs> and pay me off with a jackpot of melody. Okay. And Miss Behaven, honey, old pine. Oh, oh, you top sugar throw. Oh, have I? Yes. I guess Meredith knew what he was doing. After all, I have sung all over the country in Buffalo. Uh-huh. Oh, that's the phone in the den. I'll get no, it. No, 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 dear. I'll answer it. It may be Big Louis, uh, Lodge Lewis, the singer. Uh, I'll be right back, darling. Oh, gee, I'll be glad when the kid gets there. I can teach him a few tricks. From time to time and every time, glistening come from above. The summer name, one of the same. I, oh, gee. Found that door buzzer. Cut off my cadenza. <laughs> Hello. Hello. I'm Big Louie. Oh, Big Louie. Oh, Lodge Lewis. Well, come in. Come in. Glad to meet you. Same here. George Burns is my name. You know, you and I are in the same racket. Oh, we are, huh? What towns did you work in, pal? Oh, I've worked in practically all of them. But I suppose Akron, Ohio is where they remember me best. They'd still like to get me back there. That's a coincidence. I'm wanted there, too. <laughs> well, another good spot for me was Milwaukee. They held me there for 12 weeks. Yeah? That was a tough break. Oh, I enjoyed it. What's the longest you were ever held in one town? Well, I, uh, I did three years in Atlanta. Hey, you really weren't solid. That solid, I don't like to be in. They threw the book at me in Atlanta. <laughs> Never had that happen. But I stopped a few tomatoes in Kansas City. <laughs> Still, I can't complain. That's where I got my big break. A big New York booker came to see me, and I murdered him. Knocked off a bookie, huh? <laughs> I really killed him. Gee, imagine a little guy like you killing people. I don't get it. Well, I'll, I'll show you how I did it. From time to time and every claim, blessings gone from above. Now I get it. <laughs> huh? That technique would kill anybody. Thanks. Do you work solo or do you, or are you teamed up with somebody? Solo? I teamed up with a guy once, but he turned out to be a squealer. Yeah. I hate those tenors, too. You sing baritone, don't you? Who's talking about singing? We are. Aren't you a singer? No, I'm a burglar. Your wife came to the jail and sprung me this afternoon. So that's it. Gracie, come in here. Yes, sir. Did you home? I want to talk to you, Gracie. Uh, but she just left to visit some friends in Ireland. Come back here. So you went ahead with your crazy crime idea anyhow? Well, yes, dear. He's an awfully nice burglar, and I'm sure we can help him. Help him fully. I'll bounce him out of here on his ear. You're going to do what? <laughs> uh, I'm going to help you. That's more like it. Here's Meredith Wilson and his chiffon music, The Gypsy.
Tracy, listen to reason. We can't let Big Louie stay here. He'll steal us out of house and home. Oh, Judge, will you calm down? I'm going to rehabilitate the man, expose him to culture. But already the big ape has taken my ties, my cufflinks, my stick pin, my belts, and my shirts. Even swiped my shoelaces. Oh, darling, isn't that a small sacrifice to make for progress? This is an experiment that may benefit all mankind. Think of yourself as a pasteur. Well, I don't mind being a pasteur. But tell Louie to stop grazing on me. <laughs> well, wait till the culture starts to work. I'll introduce him to Bach and Brahms and Shakespeare. Gracie, he'll never be an honest man. Oh, how easily you pessimists give up. They said there'd never be electric refrigerators. They said there'd never be vacuum cleaners. They said there'd never be electric washing machines. But today, well, come to think of it, that's a pretty poor argument, isn't it? <laughs> certainly is. Well, anyway, try to remember this is 1946. Don't be so backward. I still... Come in. Hi, Burnses. What goes on? Oh, we're having a little argument, Bill. How come? Oh, George is still living in the 1890s. Well, you can't blame him, Gracie. Those were the best years of his life. <laughs> How come you never bring Abbott with you, Costello? <laughs> I'm only kidding, George. What's the argument about? Well, George doesn't approve of my plan to rehabilitate cr criminals, Bill. Oh, can you blame me? She brought home a gangster. Well, you're the man of the house. Throw him out. Take off your coat and bounce him. You ought to see his shoulders. <laughs> You've got shoulders. Not if he takes off his coat. <laughs> I see what you mean, Gracie. Well, if you boys will excuse me, I'm going to run next door and borrow some books and classical records from Meredith. I want to start exposing Big Louie to culture. See you later. Listen, what are you afraid of, George? Why don't you throw Louie out? Because he'd make two of me. Well, gee, we wouldn't want that to happen. One's enough. <laughs> You're a big help, comedian. I'll help you, George. Do you want to get rid of the guy? Do you think you could? Do I think I could? Listen, you're talking to Powerhouse Goodwin. Well, step right in here, Bill. I'll tell him a thing or two. Hey, you. Yeah? What do you want? Uh, I just want to tell you that Maxwell House is the very best in coffee drinking pleasure. Yet it costs but a fraction of a penny more per cup than the cheapest coffee sold. That's a value too good to miss. Bill, I thought you were going to tell him a thing or two. Well, that's one thing. This makes two. <laughs> you get the best when you get Maxwell House. In fact, the flavor of Maxwell House is so wonderful that it's bought and enjoyed by more people than any other brand at any price. Bill, you said you were powerhouse good one. How come you changed to Maxwell House good one? <laughs> I have yet to receive a paycheck from powerhouse. Oh. <laughs> yes, <laughs> Sam. <laughs> So remember, Louie, with all its extra flavor, Maxwell House costs but a fraction of a penny more per cup than the cheapest coffee sold. So insist on Maxwell House, the coffee that's always good to the last drop. You know what I think, Dimple? What? I think you're scared of me. Wait a minute. Scared of you? Listen, I could lick you with one hand tied behind me. Yeah? I could tear you limb from limb. Yeah? I could crush you to a pulp, just as I crush an orange with a single squeeze. I'd like to see you do it. Okay, bring me an orange. <laughs> well, here I am with the culture. George, would you uh, and Bill leave us alone, please? Come on, Bill. Let's okay, go. George. Now, all right, Louie, we're ready to start on our little job. Swell. It's about time. Now, I've collected up a few books and some phonograph records. Say, I've stashed away a few things myself. Oh, good, good. I'll, I want you to get acquainted with Byron and Bach. Would you like that, Louie? Yeah, especially Bach. I love his beer. Oh, no. <laughs> Bach is a great composer. Please don't let anyone hear you say he makes beer. No? No, I'm sure he doesn't want it known. <laughs> now, um, in addition to Byron and... Bach, I'll introduce you to Shakespeare and Tennyson and Franz Schubert and Charles Dickens. Don't you think we're cutting in too many guys on this? Oh, no, no. The more the better. Now, you sit down here in this easy chair, and I'll put some Schubert records on to play. Oh, Lou, you're going to love this culture. <laughs> Well, 
Well, George, I did it. Big Louie is now being exposed to culture. He is, huh? Yes. He's sitting in your easy chair in the den, up to his neck in refinement. Oriental rugs on the floor, pictures on the wall, books in his lap, and Schubert on the radio. Soon he'll be a changed man. How can you tell if he changes? Well, I took care of that. I left a dime lying on the table beside him. And if he doesn't take that dime, it means that he has reformed. I'll believe it when I see it. All right, we'll see it now. We'll look in the den. Oh, my goodness. He's gone. And my easy chair is gone with him. And the rugs are gone. The books are gone. The pictures are gone. The radio is gone. Oh, George, my silly was right. He's reformed. Reformed? He didn't take the dime. Well, we're (laughs) sick. Until next Thursday, good night and good luck from the makers of Maxwell House, America's number one brand of coffee. Always good to the last drop. Well, Gracie, I hope this taught you that you can't reform a crook with culture. It certainly did, George. I'll use psychology on the next one I bring home. I'll just let him steal all he wants. Let him steal all he wants? Sure, you'll get sick of it. (laughs) Gracie. That's the trick I learned when I was a tiny little girl. My mother bought a tremendous box of candy and said, Here, Gracie, eat all you want and you'll get sick of it. And someday I will. Good night. It can't be the same if it ain't got that name. Get bird's eye, bird's eye frosted foods. Say, folks, have you tried bird's eye grapefruit segments? Well, don't miss them. Here's orchard fresh, tree ripened grapefruit ready to serve, and already sweetened to save you sugar. There's plenty of bird's eye grapefruit segments in the store. Get some tomorrow, but look for the bird's eye name on the box. Remember, get bird's eye and you get the best. Join us again next week when we'll all be back. George Burns, Gracie Allen, Meredith Wilson and his orchestra, and yours truly, Bill Goodwin. The George Burns and Gracie Allen Show is written by Paul Henning and Keith Fowler. And now, stay tuned in for Noah Webster Says, which follows immediately over most of these stations. Good night, This is NBC, the national broadcasting company.